Welcome to Making Stuff with Chris Dayhut. I'm Chris Dayhut. In this video, we're going to take a look at a device called the Actuator, which is a key component to the automatic tool change system that is on my CNC router. Uh, the importance of this actuator is that it uh, performs the task of loosening the collet nut and tightening it. And that's no small feat for this type of device and with this type of spindle. So uh, the whole operation of this is rather complex. It's heavily involved with programming, with electronics, and of course mechanicals. So we're going to take a look at this and it's probably going to be a two-part video because of the complexity and the amount of different components that go into making this system operate. So for now, let's take a look at the mechanical aspects or the mechanical makeup of the tool change system's actuator. The actuator is made up of a number of components all tied together and encapsulated in this 3D printed housing here. Now at the far end here we've got a rotary encoder. I believe it's 200 lines per rev, uh, which would be 800 counts per revolution. That's coupled with a very simple uh, flexible rubber tubing with a couple of wire ties. Uh, it's very hard to get without making something very precise. It's very hard to get these two aligned. So a flex coupling like this is certainly far more than adequate. Uh, we've got a stepper motor. This is an older motor that I've salvaged out of a machine or a device that I made a number of years back. Uh, I get it from uh, Automation Technologies, I believe is where this one came from. Here's a gearbox um, off the top of my head. 30 to 1 gear ratio and it's right angle. So the motor's feeding it in this direction and then it makes a right angle turn going up to drive the socket that's up here. And that's a 30 to 1 ratio. And it works out just about right for these small tools. I really don't need more uh, tightening torque and the greater the reduction ratio, the slower the system operates. So. All around it was, a, I'm going to call it a lucky guess, that I went with the 30 to 1. Uh, as mentioned earlier, this is the 3D printed housing. It's printed out of PLA plastic. Uh, it appears to be more than adequate uh, in strength. I was prepared to have somebody printed an ABS for me if I had difficulty, but in all honesty, I don't believe I'm going to need to do that. Uh, here is the drive socket. Uh, that's turning the actual collet nut. We've got a micro switch here that, as you can see, the tab right in that area there, that is measuring when the socket pushes down on the, uh, when the collet pushes down on the socket when they're misaligned. And that's how I know to back up, rotate a little bit, and try again until I finally get engagement of the hex on the collet and the hex on the socket. Uh, again, another 3D printed uh, uh, component here to support the micro switch. A uh, couple of very important components. Here's an air cylinder. I mentioned uh, in another video that this is a salvage from uh, a piece of industrial garbage uh, that somebody gave to me and uh, I'm repurposing it finally in this project. Uh, this is the wrench that actually engages with the spindle. There's two flats on the spindle, and then this will advance forward to engage those flats for when I'm tightening and loosening uh, the collet nut uh, using the stepper drive along with the gear reducer and, of course, the socket. These two uh, micro switches are very important. Um, because I don't just rely on advancing or retracting this wrench to know that it is either engaged or disengaged. I use these two proc switches, or I'm sorry, two limit switches to make that determination. So most of my macros are all written around confirmation signals of something actually being where I think it is. I've done that here on the wrench, I do that here on the socket, and back here on the magazine itself I had to do the same thing. Never try to assume 
anything is where you think it is once you've actuated a cylinder or uh, a solenoid or anything of that nature when you're dealing with industrial me mechanics and electronics. Always try to get a good confirmation signal. Okay, now we'll go over this a little bit more detail to show you some of the inner workings and some details that are hard to capture on video on the actual actuator. Uh, just to get you a quick orientation, here's the stepper motor. The encoder would be back here. It's not shown in this drawing. We've got a base plate uh, that is used as a mounting plate for the gearbox. Here's the 3D printed component. Uh, that it was designed and uh, printed by myself using PLA plastic. And uh, as you can see, I just uh, started out with a square, whittled away everything that wasn't needed, and uh, kept what was required. Uh, for anything that's mounted to it, uh, such as here, uh, the switch brackets here, here, the slide uh, for the wrench, uh, this end plate for the air cylinder mount, I used uh, uh, thermoset uh, threaded inserts, brass inserts, and set that into the plastic so that it's uh, much more durable. Uh, for the wrench, uh, I'll go show you a little bit of detail about that. Um, as you can see, it is actuated by this uh, air cylinder here, engages with the uh, spindle um, on these two flats, like so. And uh, this portion of the wrench up under here, uh, let me zoom in, this portion never touches this part of the spindle. Uh, what does touch or what will contact when the flats aren't lined up is this beveled area here, and that would bump on the edge of the spindle, but uh, not with a substantial amount of force. Uh, I can take my thumb and overcome the force of this air cylinder. Uh, it's not real stiff or powerful. Um, and that way, uh, what I'm trying to do is avoid any side impact on the spindle itself and thus damaging the bearings which are up in this area. Uh, but back here you can see how the wrench moves forward and back. It's guided by this uh, linear slide. It is uh, Let's see, where did that go? Right here. It's the same slide I used on the magazine. Um, this is not a very detailed drawing, just a, a mock-up of what it is, uh, what the slide is and its functional travels and so forth. Uh, but importantly, uh, you'll see that I've got screw here that is used as a flag to trigger the two switches. Both switches are on a mounting plate that give me adjustability for their position, because I do need that to be very accurate. Uh, I don't want this switch saying uh, that the wrench is engaged if the wrench is only partially in. It's got to be fully engaged for that switch to uh, confirm that. Same thing with the retract. I can't just say, oh yeah, the wrench is disengaged at this position and then try to retract the spindle. Bad things will happen. Uh, so I only make those motions when these switches confirm the actual positions of that wrench. Now we'll take a look inside the uh, device here. Um, and what I really want you to see in here would be uh, this shaft here had to be custom made. And it uh, looks remarkably like a half-inch extension for a socket and ratchet uh, type uh, device. Uh, but it is made out of 1045 steel. I turned it to fit the bore of the gear reducer. I machined the, ha uh, the square on there to drive the socket. And that's a, a I'm going to call it a loose fit. I need the socket to slide up and down on this. Cut a couple of grooves for some C-clips or retaining clips that hold this shaft inside the gearbox. And what is not shown are a couple of uh, keyway grooves that uh, are used to drive, uh, to allow the shaft to be driven by the gearbox. So the gearbox rotates the shaft, it, it uh, locks it together with those keys. And then the square on this end of that shaft drives the socket, which in turn loosens and tightens uh, the collet, which in turn holds the tool in the spindle. 
Um, uh, here you can see how the, this is the lower uh, snap ring. Try to get this, you can kind of see a ghost image of it there. And I will zoom in here. Here is the upper one. Again, come in a little closer so you get an idea where that sits. This is a washer, probably a hardened steel washer that I bored out to fit uh, the OD of my custom drive shaft. Uh, and then this crazy purple looking weird thing here, I'll show you an actual photograph of that from the vendor's website so you get a better idea of what type of spring that is. But that's very key, that element. That spring uh, is key in that it needs to hold the socket up, but yet when I bring the z-axis down in the socket, uh, is not aligned, the hex flats are not aligned with the hex flats in the socket, the spindle will actually push the socket down. I needed that compliance. So thus the slip fit over the square on the drive shaft and the square drive of the socket. And then the spring is how I can accommodate that uh, movement, but yet keep, uh, keep it up above and in contact with this proxim or with this uh, limit switch up in here, this micro switch. Uh, here you can see how, again, the wrench would move forward riding on that uh, two inch slide. Um, you see that the slide is encapsulated on both sides in a deep groove uh, within the body of the PLA component, the housing. And uh, that uh, transfers all the torque load or the rotational load against the walls of this uh, large uh, massive piece of PLA. Uh, the screws are only really there to help hold it down and that's it. All the load is carried on the sidewalls. Uh, you'll notice here on the wrench I have the same system there. The wrench is bolted to this component of the slide uh, but the load is carried, the torsional load is carried by the sidewalls here and then on, of course, the other side of it that's cut away in this sectional view. The screws just help hold things together, but they don't really carry the load or the burden of the torque or rotational load. Uh, but this is all uh, what is required um, because you can't take a 24,000 RPM spindle and expect to effectively tighten or loosen this nut. Uh, that 24,000 RPM spindle has a minimum rotational speed of, I believe it's seven or 8,000 RPM. So it's simply not possible to engage this collet nut in a device to hold it stationary and then start and stop the spindle quick enough where you just unscrew uh, the spindle a little bit just not reasonably practical. Thus, that was the need for this whole actuator. Uh, and then the importance is, uh, in order for the logic and the control to figure out what to do at any given point, I needed to know if the socket is up or down. That tells me whether the, the uh, collet nut is engaged with the socket properly. I needed to know the position of this wrench. Uh, that was very, very critical uh, because I could not retract the spindle if the wrench is engaged and I can't uh, tighten or loosen the collet nut if the spindle isn't held stationary. And then back here would be the encoder and that gives me a, pretty much a, a very reliable and accurate closed loop position of uh, where the socket is rotationally. So I can count how far this is actually rotating uh, very accurately, and that only works on a mechanical assumption that um, the drive shaft isn't broke, the socket isn't mechanically broke, or that any of the shafts through the stepper motor and the engagement between the stepper motor shaft and the gear motor are all mechanically sound and frankly they're all way over engineered so I'm not too concerned of a failure in that area. Well I think that pretty well wraps up the mechanical uh, capabilities and the mechanical functions of the actuator for this automatic tool change system. In truth there's a lot of magic that's going to happen in uh, the software, the macros, 
as well as the software that I use uh, between the Acorn controller and the stepper drive uh, for the stepper motor that's on uh, the actuator here. I had to utilize some pretty impressive tricks to get everything to work as I wanted them to. So that'll wrap it up for this video. Uh, look for the next video in about a week where we're going to go through and cover uh, the software both in macro and in microcontroller software uh, as well as some of the electronics that make this whole thing work. See you then. Thanks for watching. This is Chris Dayhut for Making Stuff with Chris Dayhut. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe. It costs you nothing and the benefit is all to you in that it helps uh, secure future production of videos such as this that uh, many people are finding very informative. Thanks again and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.